Hi, I'm Sean Gannett, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about create a new function by composition of functions. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. So we've talked a little bit before about this, and a common expression for a composition of function is this. f of g, we have two functions, of x is equal to f of g of x. Okay? So what we're saying is uh, we have read a compositional function f of g of x is equal to f of g of x. Same thing, right? But you take that g of x function and it's a function that goes substitute into the x value, let's say, of our function of f. Okay? So we can see an image here of that. We have g of x is the output of g and, or is the output of g is the input of f. Okay, so the output of g becomes the input of f there, and x is the input of g. So x goes into g, it gets an output. That output goes as the input into f of x, and that's our composition function. Okay? Alright, so let's go with a example here. Composition, or sorry, um, definition. Compositional functions. When the output of one function is used as the input of another, we call the entire operation a composition of functions. For any input x and functions f and g, this action defines a, composition, a composite function, which we write as f of g, such that f of g of x is equal to f parentheses g parentheses x, two more parentheses. The domain of the composite function f of g is all x such that x is in the domain of g and g of x is in the domain of f. So it has to have the domains both there. It is important to realize that the product of functions f times g is not the same as the function composition f of g of x because in general f of x times g of x is not equal to f of g of x. Oof. All right, so let's get into an example here. So number two, using the provided functions we want to find so we want to find f of g of x and g of f of x. All right, and we're going to determine if the comp uh, composition function is commutative. So we'll start with this first. f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, and g of x is equal to 3 minus x. Okay. So we'll start, first start with the first part, f of g of x here. All right, we're gonna substitute g of x in for f of x. So this is how I like to do it. Let's write f of x two times, but I'm gonna give a little space for x. I'm not gonna put x in, plus one. So hopefully you can see there's a space there, that's what the x value is, and what we're gonna do is take this g of x and plug that in. So we can kinda of see it here, plug that in, three minus x. So now I'm plugging g of x in, for the x value here on f of x, so that whole function. Now we simplify, two times three is six, two times a minus x is a minus two x plus one. Combine our like terms, six and one is seven, so we have seven minus two x. All right, let's find the other one, g of f of x. The same idea, we're gonna start with g of x, three minus, and instead of x, I'm gonna put my parentheses, and in this case, I take that 2x minus 1, and I'm plugging it in there. 2x, or sorry, 2x plus 1, excuse me. Simplify, distribute the minus sign, minus 2x minus 1, okay. Then, 3 and minus 1 is a 2, so we have a 2 minus 2x here, okay. Uh, we could rewrite that if we want as now minus 2x plus 2, but what they're asking us, is this function operation uh, commutative, right? Is, what's that really meaning, is g of x, g of f of x, is that equal to f of g of x? And you tell me, are these two equal? No, they're not. So they're not commutative. Okay? All right. Let's go erase this and we'll dive into the next example here.
Okay, so now we want to interpret composite functions. So we're given this. The function c of s gives the number of calories burned completing s sit-ups. And s of t gives the number of sit-ups a person can complete in t minutes. Interpret what c of 3 of, oh, sorry, c of s of 3 is. Okay, so a few things they tell us, right? So we have our functions c of s. All right, c of s is calories burned. So a quick note, calories burned. Completing, doing, s sit-ups. s of t, that's my really bad s, leave it alone is the number of sit-ups a person can do in t minutes. What is c of s of 3? Okay. All right, what is, what is that? That's the big question. What is c of s of 3? So we have to use our knowledge of composite functions. S of t, or what is S of 3? Let's start with that. S of 3, the inside. What is S of 3? S of 3 is a person, is whatever that is, that output, okay? S of 3 is, well, in three minutes, the input is three minutes, the output is how many setups that person can do in three minutes, okay? So S of 3 is number of sit-ups, we don't know what it is, a person can do in three minutes, right? So that's S of three. Oh, I gotta put it on parenthesis here. So the number of sit-ups a person can do in three minutes is some number. We don't know what it is, but it's some number. And that number goes in to our function C of S, and that's the number of calories they're bird doing those sit-ups. So what we can do, we interpret this whole thing, is this whole function is the number of calories a person burns in three minutes or width of sit-ups. Okay? So we can recap that here, right? We have S of 3 is the number of sit-ups a person can do in 3 minutes, okay? That number gets plugged into our C of S function, and that gives us a total number of calories. So we have the total number of calories the person burns with 3 minutes of sit-ups, and it kind of jumps through the number of sit-ups. We don't know what that value is, but this is how we're interpreting everything, okay? All right, let me erase this, and we'll dive into the next example. Okay, so we're given this one here. We're investigating the order of function composition. Suppose f of x gives miles that can be driven in x hours, and g of y gives the gallons of gas used in driving y miles. Which of these expressions is meaningful? f of g of y or g of f of x? So let's see what each one of those are. So just so we can see here, f of x, is number of miles driven in x hours and g of y is the gallons of gas used in driving y miles. So what we're going to do is interpret what the two values are. What are f of g of y and what is g of f of x, okay? And which one's actually meaningful, okay? All right. So, well, our, our first function, right, f of g of y. So g of y is the gallons of gas used in y miles. So we have... And then f of x is the number of miles driven in x hours. Interesting. The number of miles driven in x hours. So 
what we're saying is the output here. So what is the output? So the input is y miles. The output's the number of gallons of gas. So if we interpret that in a sense, we're saying, okay, our function f, we're plugging as input the number of gallons of gas. And driving y miles. Okay. Well, that's kind of weird because then what's the input for f of x? The input is the number of hours, right? Hmm. So if the input's the number of hours, that we are finding a function where we're plugging in the number of gallons of gas into f of x, which is the number of miles driven in x hours. We're plugging in gallons into this value for x hours. Would it make sense? Let's try the other way. What is g of, what is the output of f of x? Well, output of f of x is the number of miles. Okay, so we have number of miles driven. So there's number of miles driven in x hours. So the number of miles driven in x hours, so our input is x hours, puts into that function, which is the g of y function, which gives us an output, or sorry, of f of x, an output of number of miles which then, the number of miles, is the input of g of y, which gives us the gallons of gas. So the second function actually makes sense. The output of f of x matches up with the input of g of y. So this one here makes sense, and what they're telling us here is that g of f of x tells us with our first input is x hours or gives us the, X, uh, the number of gallons of gas, excuse me, gallons of gas used in X hours. When it's all said and done, we input the number of X hours, that gets converted to how many miles we drive, which in the other function tells us with that, num that information how, many, how much gallons of gas did we burn. Okay, <laughs> kind of a long way through, but we got there. I hope you learned something here on how to create a new function by a uh, by composition of functions. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. And as always, thanks for watching. Minute math, minute math. When you need help, you use minute math. Minute math, minute math. When you need help, you use minute math. Minimathtutor.com